uh, uh, thank you for coming today. Um, and uh, uh, this uh, presentation is about chapter 12 of the book. Uh, and it's like uh, following uh, what Jamie uh, um, presented about uh, support vector machine. And um, Brian uh, presented about um, the football uh, ranking. Uh, so today is like the, the, the latter section of chapter 12 in the book uh, about flexible discriminant analysis. Um, uh, this is the outline of today's presentation. The first part will be on um, uh, a review of support vector machine. Um, and the latter part will be discrimin discriminant analysis. Um, so support, support vector machine is a method for classification. Um, and it builds a hyperplane that separates the points into different classes. Uh, and this is the hyperplane function, uh, which is linear. And the optimization problem is to minimize um, the wrong classification proportion. Sorry. Um, and C is a tuning parameter. Um, and then these are the constraints for this optimization problem. And a large C will reduce the misclassification proportions, like C. So, and a small C will need to a smoother boundary. Uh, the solution to this problem is like beta hat is equal to an um, alpha i hat y i and x i. And if you plug in the beta hat and alpha hat into the decision boundary, it will be like the sign of the estimated uh, boundary function. Um, and then this side is about um, transforming the previous axis into a vector of h. So each x will be um, any function of the previous x. So the boundary can be more smooth and flexible. Um, then the, classi uh, the classification function that is on the boundary will be f hat is equal to h x t beta hat plus beta zero. And in the past, there was x transpose beta hat plus beta zero hat. And the solution will be very similar, except the xi is, is replaced with kx and xi, which is um, something related to hx. And then this is the support vector machine, is equal to a penalization method. Um, in the book, it says that it would define fx to be like this, like xt um, beta plus beta zero. And then th this, uh, then the solution to this optimization problem, the minimization of like one minus y i f x i plus, which is like a loss function plus a penalty, will be the same as the solution to the optimization problem um, in the first slide. And then this is discriminant analysis, and there are like linear. Uh, discriminant analysis where the boundary is like xt beta plus beta zero. And the quadratic discriminant analysis, I guess the boundary will be quadratic then. And then it will be flexible discriminant analysis, uh, which is like linear discriminant analysis plus penalty. And then it will be penalized discriminant analysis where the penalty is like the quadratic form. And then it will be mixture discriminant analysis. Uh, where the Bayesian formula is included in it. So for the classification problem with discriminant analysis, it will be like key classes, like one, two, all the way to k. And the score function will be uh, a mapping from the classes to um, a score, um, which like evaluates how likely that point is going to be in which class. That's that's how I understand the score function. Um, 
So given the score function, um, the optimization problem will be to minimize like uh, the score minus xit beta. So I guess this assumes that the score will be xit beta for its um, form. And then this is the minimization problem for like a linear discriminant analysis because xit beta is linear. And then this is flexible discriminant analysis. Um, it has uh, L independent scorings. And I didn't know why they have L independent scorings, but then I understood because it's like um, each L is like a dimension. Uh, you project x into, so in the past it will be like x, um, it will be like, uh, so uh, the picture, um, there will be like pictures of the results that will explain this, but they are like, um, so different coordinates of scorings that will separate those points into a lot of dimensions. Uh, so eta L x is defined. So in the past it was x t beta L, uh, but now it's like eta x. So it can also be like so h x times beta L. And then the optimization problem will be to minimize this, which is theta L g i minus eta L x i square, which is a NOS square NOS function. And then the penalty will be plus lambda j eta l. Um, so um, as I said, like flexible discriminant analysis, just like uh, usual discriminant analysis plus a penalty. So it will um, penalize some directions to be zero, I guess. So in the linear discriminant analysis, when there is no penalty, um, so coordinate, so coordinate one is actually eta one hat xi, which is like here. Um, so eta 1 xi is like theta 1, and eta 2 xi is for theta 2. Uh, and so it'll be eta capital L x corresponding to theta L. And then, so the first coordinate is like eta 1 xi hat, so it's like theta 1. And the second coordinate will be eta 2 xi hat, so it will be like theta 2. Um, so it says like in the linear discriminant analysis where there is no penalty, um, if you use like coordinate 1, that is eta 1 hat and eta 2, eta two hat to plot these plots, or to plot these points, um, the classification is like uh, for different Color for different corner of the for different colors of the points, they should be like completely separate from each other, like the picture on the right. But it was not because they didn't use the penalty in in it. Uh, so on the right hand side, they use like the flexible discriminant analysis where they use penalty. Uh, so they estimated like eta one hat and eta two hat was a penalty, and then if you plot those points. Uh, using the coordinates eta one and eta two, and they will be like well separated from each other. So I guess that's the advantage of using like flexible discriminant analysis when uh, when linear discriminant analysis didn't work really well. Maybe perhaps <laughs> um, this is uh, there is an R package that um, implements all those. Uh, discriminant analysis, uh, and this one is an example in our package. Um, it uses the function FDA, and then um, the confusion matrix is like the usual confusion matrix. Like it says, like how many is classified uh, right and how many are wrong, uh, and then plot is like uh, the, just like the colorful uh, points plot. Um, like we just saw. And the coefficient will be the estimated beta hats in the optimization problem. Um, and then the posteriors are like the predictor values, like predictor classification from the model. 
uh, and then so this update is like so at Mars is like a different way of specifying the penalty function in the flexible discriminant analysis uh, where the uh, where the uh, so so it's like a kind of spline that's used in it. Um, the update is like we update this um, this model to include interactions up to second degree. Um, and then the second update for the Mars Fit 3, um, it starts the theta from the means that it estimated already from so from Mars Fit. So that's why the plot in Mars Fit 3 will be very close to the Mars Fit. And the m for Mars Fit 2, those points will be more clustered than Mars Fit because they use like a uh, higher degree. Uh, it's like they use higher degree, uh, more complex functions, so it'll fit better. And then those points will be clustered better because they didn't ha use, didn't separate the data set into training set and testing set. So they will be more clustered if they are, if they were fit with a more complex model. And these are the coefficients because they have like theta one and theta two, um, so they will be like uh, theta one is like either L, either one x, and they will have like two sets of estimate coefficients. Well, uh, this is the plot for for the first fit, so it's not as clustered. And then for the Mars fit, they use like the splines, which is more complex, so the points will be clustered better. And for the Mars fit one, uh, yep, the points are still like well clustered because they use like up to the second degree, so uh, the points will be more uh, clustered together. And then for Mars fit two, the result is very similar to Mars fit one because they use uh, because they use uh, the starting point uh, that which is estimate from Mars fit um, and then so that's that was all for flexible discriminant analysis and here is like the penalized uh, discriminant analysis um, so in penalized discriminant analysis the penalty is like beta t uh, omega beta which is like what we used in ridge regression, uh, but it doesn't include, because in the past it was like lambda j eta, so the penalty is different from uh, flexible discriminant analysis. And it says that omega depends on the problem setting. And then we'll be. Do you have any examples of what omega would be like? Uh, uh, no, I didn't uh, write one in the slides, but we have an example in the book, I think. Yeah. Uh, and this is like the mixture discriminant analysis. Um, so the first one, this is like the base formula. So it's like, um, uh, so phi is like the density function. Um, so this one assumes that there will be, because in the past, it's like uh, one class has one center, but this one is like one class has like RK centers. Uh, so it's like um, for the class K, uh, there will be like mu KR is the center of the R. So it'll be like R from one to RK, so it'll be RK centers uh, for this one. And so for the base formula, uh, it will be like this. And the function in R to implement, it will be MDA. And then for the picture on the left, um, it has three subclasses, uh, which means for each color, there will be like three centers. Like uh, this, so for three, the blue points, there will be like mu, 
um, 3, 1, mu 3, 2, and mu 3, 3. And Rk is like equal to 3, is like the number of clusters in each class. And then uh, for discriminant variance, 1 is like eta 1 hat, variance 2 is eta 2 hat, variance 3 is eta 3 hat. Oh, sorry, you don't have either, right? So uh, for the other like discriminant variance, uh, variable three and four, uh, the classification effect of those two variables is not as good as the first and second one. And then the R package example is like this, because they have like subclass two, so this is still the same data set, and they have subclass two, so each one. Uh, we'll have like two more set of coefficients estimate. So I'll be four of them. And then this one is like, uh, so this is the result, the same data set, but then now each one has two centers. And so that's all. On your last slide, so you're using the MDA function? Mm -hmm. Does it automatically select the number of centers in each group for you, or is that something you have to input? And uh, then does the number of centers have to, oh, so does the number of subclasses have to be the same in each group? Yep. Is that always reasonable? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what well, are package? Um, I said it was our package again, but. Uh, yep, yeah, I think our package is called MDA. Uh, it's still yeah. called MDA. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the package name is MDA, and it has like functions FDA and MDA and the penalty one. I think I'll be able to, because it has the method there, so. Yeah. 